Hi, the Mud Broker here. Today I'm going to do some baking. I am going to make a braided top loaf of sourdough bread with an eight part braid on it. It's going to be fantastic. As always, the first and most important ingredient of any recipe is alcohol, and today I will be drinking homemade ginger bourbon. I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon, Eileen Edge, Benedict Riggers, Kay's Kist, Damian Bamer, Dan Sturgill, Joy Jones, Leo, Randy Dorn, Sue Beck, Theodore Engelke, Tiarna Jenkins, and Valentine Tolman. Here's to you guys. Your support is greatly appreciated. Oh, that is fantastically good. Anyhow, as much as it pains me to use the metric system, this recipe is done by weight in grams. I haven't had the time to sit down and convert it into measures, units of measures that God intended. So, you're going to need a scale set to grams. There we go. Put that on there and zero it. And you start off with 400 grams of water. This is a fairly good sized batch of bread. And I put the water in first so that when I mix everything together it doesn't make a huge mess. I'll zero that again. Now we add 800 grams of bait of bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour if you want to as well, but I'm using bread flour. 800 grams of that. I should really sift this, but I usually don't, just because. I'm that sort of a guy. Ah, come on, just a little bit more. Do, 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 do. Okay, there's 800 grams. Now, this is where I depart a little bit from, well, not quite yet. I have to add some salt. Where'd that go? 10 grams of salt. And this is where I depart from a regular sourdough a bit. The sourdough starter I'm using is actually Discard. I'll provide a link to the Needy Homesteader where she shows you how to start your own sourdough starter. It's really easy. But as you feed your starter, you typically pour some off and you can use it for other things or throw it away. And you use a more active starter for bread making. But in this case, I'm going to add yeast, and I'll explain why later. And I'm going to use basically what would be discarded anyway, because it has a much more intense sour flavor to it. i got to let that dog in as soon as I get this put in. I'm going to use 320 grams, zero my scale, of sourdough starter. This is uh, actually a little bit mixed. This is discard from a whole wheat starter and a bread flour starter that I have going. 76. Of course that dog's got to start yapping as soon as I start filming. 329. Well, but that's close enough. I'll set that aside. Now sourdough purists would probably be upset because I'm using yeast in this, but typically what you do with a sourdough 
is you mix up your bread and you let it rise for about an hour until it doubles anyway. Punch it down and then put it in the fridge and let it proof overnight. That gives it time for the yeast to work and the microbes to work and it will ferment it all the way through and it will give you a very light airy crumb. But with this, because it's a soft dough, after I braid it, if I let it sit overnight, the braids would basically melt back into the, into the loaf and you lose all the detail that you put in there in the first place. So I add a heaping teaspoon of yeast, which is actually about half of what you would use. I'll give it a little more. About half of what you would normally use for a yeast bread uh, recipe of this size. Let me go let that dog in and I'll come back. Okay, anyway, I got the yeast in there. I'll take that off of my scale. I'm also going to add about two he heaping tablespoons of butter. The butter helps to make the dough more elastic and it makes it easier to roll out and braid later. So, just mix that in. And I'm just going to stir this in to wet everything down so when I put it on the mixer I don't get a big cloud of flour dust. Normally I let it knead on the mixer for about five or six minutes for most yeast breads. But for this I'm going to go ahead and let it knead out for about 20 minutes. And that really works it through nicely and you get a nice very soft a little bit sticky dough out of it. That should be wet down enough. I'm going to go throw this on my stand mixer and knead it out and I'll come back when that's ready to go. Okay, this is kneaded for 20 minutes and it's a nice very velvety soft a little bit sticky dough. So I'm going to knead a little bit of flour down on my counter, a little bit of flour on my hands get this out and make a nice little ball out of it. Kind of pinch the bottom together a little bit. It doesn't have to be really good. We'll set that down. Grease up the inside of my mixing bowl. You can use oil for this too and just wipe it around with a paper towel if you like, but I do it this way. That was a little bit more than what I needed, but that's okay. And we'll put this in. And I'll flop it around a little bit so that it coats the outside of the dough ball with a little bit of butter. Cover that up with plastic wrap, put it somewhere warm and let it rise until it at least doubles in size. Take about an hour, maybe two, depending on how warm it is and various other conditions. And uh, I'd like to mention a little trick right now. Kneading dough for about 20 minutes on your mixer is a pretty good workout for your mixer and it'll probably get pretty warm. The best way to cool down electrical motorized equipment like that is to take everything off it, turn it on high, and just let it run free without a load on it. That'll let it draw air through and cool it down. It'll still be warm, but it'll cool it down quite a bit. And after about five, six minutes, you can shut it off, and it'll uh, help prolong the life of electrical equipment. With that out of the way, I will be back once once this has doubled in size. Alrighty, this is more than doubled in size and now we get to the fun part. Punch that down and get a little bit of flour out. this out and we'll flower my hands. Get this out of the way. 
So what we're going to do is cut this in half, more or less evenly. Set half of it aside and put half of it into this oval cast iron roaster. Now you can use a Dutch oven, you can use a square baking pan, you can use a glass casserole dish. It doesn't really matter as long as it's deep enough. I'm going to take half of the dough, kind of stretch it out a bit and shape it roughly, and put it in the bottom of the baking dish. Set that aside for a minute. Come back to this. And we're going to cut this into eight pieces and roll them out into long, thin strips. Now you could probably cut, roll this out flat with a rolling pin and uh, cut it up with, you know, a knife of some sort. But I'd rather do it like this because by hand rolling them, like I show you, it uh, makes the pieces work a lot easier. You'll see what I mean when we get that far. Anyway, cut her in half. Cut it into quarters. And then into eighths. Because we need eight strips to make our eight part braid. Now, a little more flour on my hands. I like to roll it like this. You take your hands and you put them more or less in a V shape like this. You take a gob and you just let it roll between the edge of your hands. And as you do that, you kind of let some fall on out into a long thin strip like that. And you just keep doing that until you got it rolled out. I'll stop the camera because you don't need to watch me roll out eight of these things. But you see what's going on. And I'll be back once I got these all rolled out and we're ready to start braiding. Okay, I got my strips all rolled out. They don't have to be perfectly even as long as you don't have any ridiculously thin spots in them. And now I'm going to show you how to do an eight part braid. Now that might sound like a macrame nightmare but it's really very easy. You want to think of this as two groups of four. And we will pinch these ends together here so we actually have two groups of four. Start with the farthest strand on the left. You go over the strand next to it. Then you go under the next strand. Over the next one. And under the next. That, that will put this outside strand here into the group of four on the right. Then you start on the right with the farthest one and you do the opposite. This time you start off going under, then over, then under, and then Come here you, over. And you've done the same thing. You've taken the outside and moved it to the inside. Then it's just a matter of repeating yourself. You go over, under, over, under. Get a little bit of space back in these guys. And then you go under and over under and over. Get your four reorganized here. And you just keep right on repeating that. Over, under, over, under, under, over, under, over, over, under, over, under, 
and under over I want to be under that one over that one over under over under under over under over once you get down to the end you'll kind of start running out but work them in as best you can over under over under under over under I'll just flop this guy over and this guy here under and we'll pinch that together a little bit pinch this end together a little bit and now comes the tricky part take your pan and line it up with the best looking section of your braid usually in the middle because your ends will be a little messed up and then pick up the whole works and set it on the dough in the pan I lost my knife cut the end off knife is not cutting at all. Cut the end off the other end. Hopefully this will cut this time. Set these aside a little bit and kind of spread this out a little bit and arrange it if it needs to be adjusted some. And then I'm going to take, see that, I'm going to take these two balls of dough, knead them together, and I'm going to roll these out into long thin strips, just like we did with the rest of it. And I'll be back once I got these done. Okay, now that I had these rolled out, both of these pieces are long enough to reach all the way around the outside of my pan. What I'm going to do is take them and just twist them around each other. And we're going to make a nice little border for our loaf of bread. we're looking already. Cover this up, let it rise for half hour, 45 minutes or so, and then we'll throw it in the oven. Alrighty, this has risen up nicely and it's almost ready to go in the oven. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but before you put your dough in the pan, grease your pan a little bit with butter, margarine, lard, oil, whatever you normally use. Grease it up a little bit. I have my oven preheated at 375. I'm going to give this a little egg wash. Egg wash is just an egg beaten with a couple of teaspoons of water. I'm going to brush this on nice. Now normally for most yeast breads I bake them at 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes. This has a fairly high water content so it takes a bit longer and I bake it at 375 for about an hour generally. We'll see how it goes. But getting all the little nooks and crannies there without puddling it up too much. And I'm also going to try for the first time to bake this covered at first. A lot of sourdough bakers put it in a covered pan at first and then uh, uncover it for the last half of the baking time. 
So, got that all egg washed. Cover it back up and pop it in the oven. And I'll be back in about an hour or so when it's done. Okay, I just pulled this out of the oven and ain't that pretty. I'll let her cool down for a little bit and then I'll come back and we'll slice into it and see just how the crumb turned out. But this should be really nice. It's got a nice hollow to it so it should be done all the way through and I'll see you in a little bit. You're not supposed to cut bread when it's still warm but I always do. I'll show you the sides of that a little bit. Give you a nice good long look at it before I go cutting into it. And we'll see what kind of a crumb we got. Whoops. Oh yeah. Lucky there. Curls up nice. That's done all the way through. And give her a little taste here. Mm. It's got a real good sourdough taste. By using that pour off, I usually let it sit overnight before I use it. And uh, it gets a little bit more sour than it normally would be after you had just fed it. So, that's a good way to use your excess sourdough starter but this will work with any kind of dough just a basic yeast bread dough you can do the braids and you can make yourself a really beautiful loaf like this well that should wrap us up for now and I'm gonna go eat me some bread and I'll talk to you later